I'm Bill Bixby. You know Eddie's father. And this is Eddie, Brandon Cruz. No, this isn't the courtship of Eddie's father. It's a different kind of program, one which we believe is important to everyone. It's a program about our environment, the way we use it, the way we misuse it, the way we live with it, the way we might die with it. Here we are, and out you go. Yuck! But, Dad, I don't see anything. Well, wait till we get to the edge. Come on, want to race? You're on. Is this where you used to come when you were a boy? Mm-hmm. How far away could you see then? Well, all the way to the ocean. Dad, was it pretty? that in the time span of a single generation, this world has become so polluted that a man can't even show his son the places of his childhood. A hill that I used to run and play on, or a mountain that I would just sit and look at with wonder. I can't show him, because smog gets in the way. I can't even show him the stream where I used to go fishing, because it doesn't exist anymore. At least, not the way it was when I was there. The water is so filthy now, the fish refuse to live there. But what is worse is the children's stories, such as Robert Louis Stevenson's A Child's Garden of Verses, may no longer be meaningful to children because the beautiful nature images that are used are unreal to them. They're a fantasy as remote as uh, a world without television. But what is real is that Eddie's is the first generation to have been born and raised in a totally polluted atmosphere. Do you realize that he and others his age have never once in their lifetimes taken a single breath of outdoor air that was clean? Whew. Hey, Sport. Wanna wanna? Okay. We owe it to Eddie to all the eddies of the world to try and understand what's happened here and to do something about it. So we would like to invite you on a journey, sometimes strange, 
very often frightening. A journey into a child's garden of pollution. start making pollution? Well, a long time ago, I guess, but nobody paid much attention to it till the 1950s. And that was when DDT was first used by farmers to kill pests that destroyed their crops. And it worked. But it did other things, too. Leaves that were sprayed with DDT fell to the ground, where they were eaten by insects. And the insects were eaten by birds. And the birds died. And the forest, which had known the singing of birds for a thousand years, was quiet. Dad, will DDT hurt me? I mean, if I don't touch it. I don't know any. Why not? Well, because it's in the atmosphere now, and in the ground, where it runs off into streams, and then in, in all the oceans of the world. We're actually living in a sea of pesticides, Eddie, and it's getting worse. Someday somebody should say, don't use it. Yeah, that's right, Eddie. But there are always people who say, why shouldn't I? I believe that the people that are complaining about the pesticides don't know what they're talking about or else they're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. The public don't have the, the true picture. Uh, you talk to any farmer and I don't think he feels he could get along without it. Only 5% of the land has ever had pesticides applied to it, yet its residues have been found everywhere, even on the Greenland ice cap, and even in American cities. Why do you know that pesticide residues have been found in unborn babies and in mother's milk? Breastfed babies in America today consume four times the daily amount of DDT judged safe by the United Nations. Farmers may not be able to get along without pesticides, but a lot of other people would like to try. But it's not only pesticides that pollute the atmosphere. It's the automobile, too. 60% of the smog hanging over America's cities is caused by the family car. The man who knows more about this than just about anybody else is Caltech's Ari Hagenschmidt. He rides the freeways measuring carbon monoxide. It is just a question of the density of the traffic, and then uh, it shoots up. Now we have been drive driven here, over the hundred again. And now we have that, uh, that blue car in, in front of us, and uh, we are uh, picking up his exhaust. You see, it goes to uh, close to 60 parts per million. There, it goes over the 60, that little Volkswagen here. You see? 60. And so any time that another car with his exhaust comes close by, uh, you uh, see the pointer uh, move. The, the, the air conditioning in a car doesn't help to take the smog out. It just uh, it doesn't pass through uh, activated charcoal. It's, uh, it's only a cooling effect, and uh, it doesn't make any difference. Well, here, here we uh, have, there, yeah, it goes up to over the hundreds. Now it is 95, over the 100 again. Over the 100, it stays over the 100. That's probably that car that just came by. Here, still over the 100. The best thing is to stay home. There, yeah, it goes up to over the hundreds. Now it is 95, over the hundred again. Over the hundred, it stays over the hundred. That's probably that car that just came by. Take a deep breath, hold it, let it out. 
Each day of our lives, we breathe 18,000 times. 500 cubic feet of air is taken into our lungs, polluted air. It's estimated that if we were to reduce air pollution by 50%, we could cut death from lung cancer and other lung diseases by 25%. We could reduce death and disease from heart disorders by 15%. And we could reduce the nation's medical bill by at least $2 billion each year. But the most important medical statistic of all concerning air pollution has yet to be calculated. Dr. Roman Yonder. Okay. We uh, know that the older people now are having more disease with smog just in the last half of their life. Our older population have had at least 25 years of clean air to breathe before the smog problem got this bad. But now our children don't know what clean air is. They'll be breathing dirty air for all of their lives, and what this will do to them when they're as old as these patients, I don't know. Findings from studies made recently at two medical schools in England indicate that at a very early age, children raised under conditions of high pollution begin to show evidence of permanent malfunction. It's believed that most of them will be chronically ill by the time they reach the age of 30. Hold it. Breathe now. And again. And again. Dad? Yeah? If the air is too dangerous to breathe in, we can wear oxygen suits just like the spacemen. Yeah, but we may have to, Eddie. You see, we spoiled our air just as we spoiled our water. Pollution has even reached the oceans, and now even they are in danger of dying. There's nothing beautiful about looking at the sea anymore. Offshore rigs sit on the horizon, where they all too frequently spill their oil out over the waves. Part of the garbage that's filling the sea and making it ugly and killing it. This picture was taken at nighttime in total darkness off the coast of California, and this is a boat. This is another example of the use An of An unusual laboratory in Downey, California, infrared. the Space in Division of North American Rockwell Corporation. Here, Dr. Robert Stibers uses high-altitude sensors to detect pollution, a device from outer space research at work on problems here on Earth. Now, let's add some color to it and see what's happened here. The yellow represents the fact that this boat has, is discharging something, sewage, oil, garbage, from its bilges. This represents dumps by other boats in an earlier time. What we're doing here is tracking down pollution by means of advanced technology. We take black and white infrared photographs place on the table, show it through the TV camera, display it on the TV monitor here. This is an aerial view of some very pretty countryside with a nice little stream running through this area. The stream appears clear and very nice. In fact, people swim in this and fish in here all the time. Now let's add some color and see what some of the dangers are in this stream. The purple area, may I have one more, please? The purple areas, as you see in here, represent growth, large growths of algae in the stream. Algae grow because of organic material. On further investigation, was discovered that sewage, partially treated sewage, is dumped on the hillside up here, and it seeps down into this stream, supporting the algae. This is the same stream as it enters into the ocean. This is the ocean, here are the beaches, 
and this is the stream. Now with color we will see what happens when a polluted stream dumps into the ocean. You will notice that the polluted stream, the contaminated water, does not go way out in the ocean as would be hoped and disappear. It does run right along the beaches. These are public beaches and heavily populated areas and sticks close to the shoreline. Pollution. It's impossible to escape from it. Pesticides washed in from the land and other chemicals. Debris, human and industrial. It all ends up in the sea and the sea is dying. Dad? Mm-hmm. Who is to blame? What do you mean? I mean, if something is wrong, someone is to blame for it. Are children to blame? Well, I guess we all are ready, each and every one of us. When you get right down to it, the main problem of pollution is people. There are just too many of us. We crowd ourselves into every available inch of space, stripping hills and everything that was once beautiful. We don't let anything stand in our way of destroying the environment. We build cities that are monuments to congestion. We pollute our senses with garish signs and loud noises. We take open spaces and we shut them in. It seems sometimes that we purposely design our open spaces to make sure that they will not perform ecologically for the good of the community. All this we do to ourselves in the name of progress. But most of what we do to ourselves is build freeways that cover the land with concrete and provide room for more and more automobiles that pollute the environment more and more and more. Sometimes you wonder if cities are built for people or for cars. It's all part of a way of life that we have chosen for ourselves. We want to go places fast, so naturally we take an airplane, a jet airplane, and in so doing, we add to pollution. Seven billion gallons of jet fuel are used in the United States each year, and most of it spreads out over the land in a steady flow of black exhaust. Pollution isn't all as impersonal as jet planes or vast stretches of ocean. It gets back to the way we choose to lead our lives. For many of us, we shop our way into pollution. We buy too many things, some of which create enormous pollution problems, like laundry detergents containing phosphates, which end up poisoning our waterways. And so many of the things we buy come wrapped in plastic, and then those things are placed in bags, and then into other bags. The problem of disposing all these things becomes monumental. It averages out to five pounds of garbage per person per day. That is a billion pounds of garbage, each and every day. This is a nation that is being buried in its garbage, and it keeps on coming. We are being polluted by products. The public wants them. Industry turns them out. To do this, Power is being used in increasingly large amounts, and power generates heat. It is in this process that perhaps the greatest of all dangers to man exists, thermal pollution, atmospheric changes which may ultimately destroy all life on Earth.
And all this we have done to ourselves. We've built cities and have seen them crumble. We've moved mountains and have seen them turn to dust. We've dreamed dreams and have seen them shattered. We have lived our lives among those dreams. And now we can dream no more. Sunny, I think that we are. Dad, is there anything I can do? I think there is, Eddie. A great man once asked us for commitment and sacrifice. He said, uh, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I think it's time for us to renew that commitment. You know, maybe this will bring us together, all of us, young and old, black and white, rich and poor. Maybe it's time to say, no more. No matter what the consequences, we must do it. If we are to live and not die. Dad? Yes, Eddie. 
Will you take care of me? Oh, yes, Eddie, I will. Dad? Mm-hmm. Will other fathers take care of their sons, too? Oh, I hope so, Eddie. 